morning. Good morning. All right. It's so good to see you all today. As we were sitting up here, we were worried that we were going to be up here by ourselves. But uh, it's delightful seeing you. There are a number of people in the audience that uh, came this morning because I am speaking. My wife is here and a good friend of the family is here and neighbors are here from the building that I live in. And so let me add my welcome to them specifically. And it's good to see your face. Um, before I get started, let me let you know that there, in the social hall, which is the next room over, uh, where we'll have coffee, there will be tables set up with tents on them with the four words that I'm going to be talking about. And so you can pick a table based on what you like or the one that's available when you get in there. They are, it might be full, but go to another one. And it'll have either the word hope, fear, doubt, or then one uh, has, uh, uh, what is hope to be discussed? Uh, when I selected this topic this morning for my message, and I looked on the program that they handed me and they called it a sermon, and so let me get that straight. <laughs> it's not a sermon, <laughs> it's a message that I hope to deliver with you this morning. Uh, when I speak of hope, I'm talking about my own life, and out of that life, I think often about my mother and what she had to say about hope. And you've heard me say this before, but mother always said that hope meant that tomorrow would be better than today and that you could make it so based on what you do. Nothing changes if you don't do something, but if you do something, things get better. That's what we're trying to get over this morning. Uh, in selecting this topic, I see hope as a transforming and a sustaining force in our lives uh, that actually gives us the premise that tomorrow will be better than today. And so you'll have something to look forward to but I see a lot of people who start the day off bad. They wake up feeling bad. They wake up because it was hot outside. It's July, it's supposed to be hot. <laughs> they wake up and it's raining. And it's supposed to what? Rain. And somebody needs rain even if you don't need any. So I don't know why people have a bad day because of that. But I walk early in the morning, real early. Usually I leave home, they won't let me leave any earlier than that. By 4.30, I'm walking. And I get to the 7-Eleven to get my coffee, and I'll say, good morning. And somebody, and they go, good morning. And I say, <laughs> I say it again, good morning. They say, good morning. And I say, why did your day get started so bad? <laughs> and they'll give me some reason why the day is starting bad. And in the building that I live in, I got on the elevator, and I said, hello. And the person went, hello. And I said, what's wrong with you today? And guess what she said? Hot outside. I said, it's July. <laughs> it's supposed to be hot. And I was getting ready to tell her, you could be in Canada where it's cool, but you wouldn't be able to breathe. <laughs> and so I shared that with a couple of other people. And they laughed and said, I'm glad you said it like that, because I definitely don't want to be in Canada where the smoke is. So we're doing pretty well here in the Tidewater area. What is hope? Hope is an optimistic feeling. It's a state of mind on an expectation that's positive with respect to something that's going to happen later on. So what's your hope all about this morning. What are you thinking about? What are you looking forward to? As you use people that belong to this community, uh, we are challenged to use hope as an expression of confidence in life, that it's great to be alive, that we're here. Think about that one. 
And not only do we feel that way, but we see life as a gift to all who are alive. And because it's a gift, it means that the, your circumstances ought to get better. But the Bible says that, the Lord said, I come that you might have life, and you have that more abundantly. And so having hope means that I'm looking forward to an abundant what? Tomorrow, this afternoon, next week, however time you want to put on it. That's what we're talking about. Why do we need it? Why do we need hope? Sir Chinmore had this to say about it. Without hope, life would be dull, monotonous, and miserable. Let me say that one to you again. Without hope, life would be dull, monotonous, miserable. There would be no aspiration, no goals. Life would be like stagnant water of a swamp. It would be horrible if we didn't have it. I talk a lot about hope to people who are aspiring to be leaders or they're already leaders and they hope to get better or something. And John Maxwell, one of the leading writers on leadership and careering and hope and a whole lot of things, has this to say. He simplifies hope as this. Hope gives one the motivation, courage needed to succeed. Even when you hit rock bottom, when you're having a bad day, with no plans to make it better, he says, life gives one hope that can pull you out of your disappointments or whatever the situation might be. When we examine hope with regards to faith, I find that hope and faith go together. And it does that because faith solidifies hope. It enables it to be. And those of us who have it, that tomorrow will be better than today, we have the possibility of dreaming the possible dream, not the impossible dream, but the possible dream. When we lose hope, fear and doubt sets in. And fear is a really heavy load to carry around. It takes a lot of energy when you're fearful. You're always on your guard. As a scientist, your body functions and acts against that. Losing hope means we lose in confidence and determination. It means losing one's ability to have dreams for the future. When we lose hope, despair replaces joy. Fear replaces assurance. Anxiety and insecurity replaces confidence. Wow, listen to all of those things. Let me read that to you again. When we lose hope, despair replaces joy. Fear replaces assurance. Anxiety and insecurity replaces confidence. Losing confidence leaves the individual in a state of hopelessness and the feeling of being abandoned. And I don't know how you get there. <laughs> because without friends, life wouldn't be worth anything anyway. Without loved ones, life wouldn't be worth living. So you, I hope you're not there ever, ever. When we lose hope, it takes away our motivation to become whatever that is, a parent, grandparent, whatever. Allow me to 
share with you how hope as a prison, prison in my life uh, has made such a difference. And it came out of the development in my home with my parents. Uh, they sort of influenced and directed us about happiness and feeling good about yourself. Both mother and dad lived life as a blessing. They saw it as a gift to just be alive. And their thankfulness was told, us, told to us through words that they used. And for mother, this was her words on something. Don't pray for an easy life. Pray to be a strong person. Thus, she fostered in the family that she let you know that life is tough. It's a struggle to, to live well. It's a struggle to get up in the morning sometime. But you should get up anyway and go about the day of what you're going to do. But she also said to us that if you challenge yourself and you ask for the right things, and she was talking about praying, she said when you pray, ask for good health, ask for strength, ask for wisdom. She said you need help because the world is going to beat you up bad and you can't make it if you don't have your help. She said, you need strength just to do what you must do. Your daily life, whatever that is. Taking care of somebody, being a parent. She said, you need wisdom to make good choices. And so she talked to us about that. Dad did too. My father said this, be sure that your short-term goals and your aspirations complement your responsibility for living each day. Make sure you, your goals and your objectives for life help you to live from day to day. And I tell young people that when I'm talking to them. Don't get so carried away, he said, looking at tomorrow <laughs> when you forget to live today. And then finally, my father talked to us about service, and, and service had to do with hope. To be of service, he said, know that the good you do will come back to you, come back to your children and your children's children. So don't do it for any other reason than it's just good to be of service to something. So this is one of the things that we talk about here. We take up a collection uh, on the second Sunday of the month that we donate to some cause. And it's over and beyond the normal kind of thing that we do. Make a difference. Because I heard all of that in the house where I grew up, around the kitchen table, around the fireplace, wherever it was, that allowed me to get over the things that were happening to me at the moment. And for me at the moment, I grew up when the world was segregated. I grew up when there was a lot of hatred towards black folks specific. There's hatred in the world today about everything. But at that particular time when I was growing up, it was against black folk. And I grew up at a time when opportunity was denied. And I've told you that before. I tell people I walked to a one-room school that was three miles from my house. And you did that, it didn't make no difference whether you were in first grade or twelfth grade. Well, it didn't go further than the seventh grade we walked, rather. But you just did that every day. And it wasn't something that you could complain about, it was just life. And if you did well, things got better for you. And so mother kept saying that to us. Their words and their coaching and their role modeling and all of those things fostered hope, which allowed me to have a vision for today that I'd be standing here today. 
grateful for this moment in my life. And I hope as I look at you, you're grateful for this moment in your life that can make all the difference. Maintain courage and faith when hope is lost. When you're in the dumps, <laughs> how do you get out? When things didn't go right, what do you do? Well, first of all, hopefully you got some energy there from someplace or you get some from someplace and you have to start doing what you, you just have to do. You just have to go do it, that's all. And sometimes that's not your favorite thing, but it's just the way it is. You have to have courage to see life being worth living. We hear about people who give up on life and they commit suicide. I had a good friend that that happened to back home. And I, when I heard that he'd killed himself, killed himself and his wife, she was sick. And he, he was thinking he couldn't take care of her. And all he had to do was just move to Richmond where his daughter was. And he'd have had all the support he needed. But he made a decision that he couldn't do that. I don't know why. The wife didn't. She was, she was uh, dementia. So she wouldn't have cared a whole lot about where she was going. He could have easily done that. But for some reason, he didn't see life worth living if he couldn't take care of her by himself, which was a selfish thing to do. Don't get carried away. Keep life in balance. That's another thing you can do. Just go back and check up. Caution yourself to act, but not too fast and not too what? Slow, gradual. Keep it in perspective for the moment. And then finally, talk to somebody. I kept saying, because I spoke at this gentleman's funeral, and I said, he, he called me. He would call me sometimes almost every month just to talk to me. And sometimes he'd call me in the evening on a Sunday, and he'd say, I'm up by the lake. I'm on a date with my wife, and she didn't even know where she was. But he was feeling good that he was doing that at that time. So sometimes we have to talk to ourselves. We have to talk to somebody else. We have to get professional, professional help. But you have to figure out a way to live your life so that it's worth living. I go back to this question that I'm asked a lot. How do you stay like you are all the time? And I sort of laugh and say, I got a wife that's fantastic. She's here today. I got friends that are fantastic. Some of them are here today. I got a daughter that's awesome. And so when I think about hope, that just does it for me. Then I got a huge family, a whole lot of cousins, a whole lot of folk. I got a whole lot of people that I've mentored, that I hear from. So get up and do something. But my greatest joy is I'm an educator. I've been an educator for 58 years. And when I think about, when I say an educator, not only do I teach, I coach, I advise, I, I advocate for folk, I do a lot of things. And what I'm hopeful about that is that it will blossom into something that we can multiply. That not only does life get better for them, but it gets better as they help other people get better. Wow. And when I think about that, this is awesome. So I don't have bad days. Let me say that to you again. <laughs> So don't get mad with me because I'm, life is great. It's a wonderful kind of thing. How do we let life into our spirits? That's a, your spirit is the foundation of what you're all about. How do we let hope get into that, to our spirits? This is a quote. Hope makes sense of the past, brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. 
I have, I, I'm on a mailing list for Cronin Ferry's publications. But the CEO of Cronin Ferry is Bernson, and he offers this about hope. He said, hope makes sense of the past. He says, it, it creates a vision for tomorrow. But more importantly, he says, if you use it right, if you are grateful for hope, if you are resilient in whatever it is you're trying to do, if you have aspirations for something, standing here today, seeing you today, welcoming you today, this is awesome. Finally, courage. Courage to act on who you are, where you are, what you want to be, where you want to go. And then finally, how do we make, put hope into our daily lives so that it gives us something on the, on the spot? How do we do that? The time between the time when you were born and when you die is your lifespan. That's, that's, that's your working time, <laughs> okay? You can use it up fast. You can be bored to death with it. You could do whatever, but that's what you got. Nothing more, nothing less. As we move through the seasons of our lives, it is my hope that we will change where we're sitting, change the way we think, change the way we get along with people. Things change the way we treat each other. For me, I'm constantly thinking about how do I live so that it's, it brings me happiness and joy and impact. What can I do? And so <laughs> my wife and daughter, <laughs> they keep asking me, when are you going to stop running around the country running your mouth? And I have to laugh and say, that's my gift. I have no business doing other things. That's not what I do. I can get young people's attention. I can get them to listen. And I can get them to act. I just came from a conference, an institute that I spoke at in California. You probably missed me a couple of Sundays. And there were 20, 23 uh, up-and-coming African-American leaders. And we were talking to them about mentoring and long-range long planning and goal setting and all of the kind of things, time management and all of that. And I gave them a deadline to get back to me, the ones that I had talked to one-on-one. -on -one. And so Friday and yesterday, I was hearing from them. And I was so happy to read the kind of things they told me that they got from me and how they had changed within a week. They, they, they went back different. And so I'm asking you today, I've got a couple of things to ask of you. And I want you to walk out of here different than what you came in as, whatever it was. If you were burdened when you came in the door, leave it here. If you weren't happy when you came through the door, leave it here. If you needed joy when you came in, Take joy, what? With you as you leave. That's how we put it into our daily lives. I have a formula for being successful. And it's simply this. Put your time, your talent, your energy, and your effort into what you're doing. And if you do that consistently, you'll be successful. I don't care what it is. I'll be talking to people. I was talking to these young people about writing because we don't write enough. We read bad stuff in the newspaper, but we don't go back and write a letter to the I don't either. That's not what I do. But we write a letter to the editor. I read them. I read them religiously every day. Every day I read in the paper what people have to say. 
what they, what's bothering them. Where do you tell your story? Where do you write your comments? Where do you get this off of your chest and move on to the next thing that you should be working with? Once you unburden, once you don't have that load on you anymore, once you give up, give that up. Some things, nothing you can do about it. Just nothing you can do about it. Give it up then and move on. Once you get that there, there's one more quote I want you to hear. Hope is hearing the music of life. And faith is the ability to dance to the music. Hope is the music of life, the good stuff, the good stuff. And faith is what? To dance to it, enjoy it. So for those of you who are here today, some of you are new. When I found this place, <laughs> I found the music that I needed for my life. And I've been dancing to it ever since. <laughs> These words to take with you. Wise planning, it's called. It's in the hymnal, 693. And now may we have faith in life to do wise planning, planting, that the generation to come may reap even more abundantly than we did. May we be bold in bringing to fruition the golden dreams of hope to humankind and justice to all. Peace, joy, happiness. Amen.